Hey Forge members and welcome to another Tutorial Thursday. I'm actually from the Forge and I'm here to show you how to solve an interesting problem algorithmically. So without further ado, let's hop right in. For this problem, we want to write a program that takes as input an array of positive integers and returns the next permutation using dictionary ordering. What this means is that if we have the array 102, the next permutation would be 120. The next permutation after that would be 201, and then finally 210. If the array that we're given is the final permutation, we want to simply return an empty array. If you want to try this out for yourself, now's the time to pause the video and give it a shot. Now let's try and work through this problem together. If we're given an array of integers, a very simple brute force solution would be to compute all the permutations of the array and find the next permutation like that. This may seem pretty easy to do for smaller array lengths, but if we're given an array tens of millions of elements long, we'll clearly see that the number of permutations is the length of the array factorial. That's way too much time to compute and way too much space to store. Instead, let's look at some concrete examples to see if we can find some trends in the next permutation process. Starting with 431280, the next permutation is 431802. Using another array of 912-4310, we can find the next permutation to be 9130124. What are the steps that these two examples have in common? Well, we can break our examples down into three simple steps for finding the next permutation. First, we find the largest subarray which includes the last element in the array with consecutive decreasing integers. In our second example, this would be 4310. We'll call the index 2 is in our inverse point. Next, starting from the end of the array, we find a number that is larger than our inverse point. In this case, it would be 3. We then swap 3 and 2. Lastly, we reverse the elements after the inverse point index. And just like that, we found an algorithmic solution to our problem that doesn't compute any more permutations than we need. The last thing we need to make sure of before we start coding our solution is to return an empty array if the permutation is the largest, but we'll deal with that later. Now let's hop into the code. I'll be coding it in Python. We'll start by setting up our function, which takes in one input and array. Then we'll declare our variables. We have inverse point, which is equal to the length of the array minus two. This is the second last element in the array. I'm making the assumption that the input array will always be larger than one element, and this is because a single element is already at its final permutation, and there's no reason we need to check for the next permutation. Next, we'll want to run a while loop. The goal of this loop is to find the actual inverse point in the array. We should run this while loop so long as two conditions are met. One is the inverse point is greater than or equal to zero, because if it's less, we have reached the beginning of the array. And two, the current value of array at index inverse point is greater than or equal to array at index inverse point plus one, because if it's not, we found our inverse point. The inverse point variable will decrease by one with each run of the loop to make sure we continue up the array. Next, we'll check to see if our inverse point variable is greater than zero. If it isn't, we know that we are at our final permutation because the largest subarray of consecutive decreasing values that includes our final element is the entire array. We'll return an empty array in this case. Next, we'll find a number larger than array at index inverse point, starting from the end of the array, and swap it with array at inverse point. Swapping variables in Python is particularly easy as you don't need a temporary variable to store anything. The swap can all be done on one line. We'll also want to break out of the loop to make sure we don't continuously swap elements until we reach array at index inverse point. And finally, we want to reverse the final part of the array after the inverse point. 
This can be easily done with the reversed function in Python. We'll also want to return our array. And just like that, we're done. This function has a constant space complexity as we only need one variable, inverse point, regardless of how large our input array is. It also has an O of n time complexity. We have to traverse the array two times, once to find the inverse point, and once to find the index we swap with the inverse point. It also has an O of n time complexity. We must traverse the array two times, once to find the inverse point, and once to find the index we swap the inverse point with. The reverse function also has an O of n runtime, so the total runtime can be shortened to just O of n. This is much better than the previous n factorial space n time complexity. One of the things this problem really teaches is using concrete examples to find a solution. By simply looking at one input array, you may not be able to find the solution. However, by looking at many examples, you're able to find a pattern in finding the next permutation and create an algorithm to solve the problem. This skill is super useful for interviews and knowing how to identify an algorithmic problem and finding patterns is a must. So thanks for watching guys, hope you guys found this valuable. If you have any Tutorial Thursday topics you want to suggest, I'm going to leave the feedback form below. Thanks for being a Forge member and we'll see you guys next week. Take care guys.